Welcome to the Photo Modeler Vehicle Crush Measurement using an exemplar tutorial. In this tutorial, we measure vehicle crush using an undamaged exemplar 3D model and photographs of the damaged vehicle taken with an unknown camera. While this video shows a vehicle measurement, the techniques demonstrated can be used in other types of forensic scenes as well. Here are three photos of a damaged vehicle. The damaged vehicle no longer exists, so these photos are the only source for measurement. To solve this project, since nothing is known about the camera that took the crush photos, some information about the uncrushed part of the vehicle is needed. This known information can be used to calculate the camera parameters using a process called inverse camera. Measurements taken from an undamaged vehicle, that is the same make and model, can be matched up with the undamaged area of the subject vehicle. This is called using an exemplar. Here is a photomodeler project of an exemplar vehicle of the same make and model as the crushed one. The exemplar photomodeler project was created using a calibrated camera and is accurately modeled. To save time, or if an exemplar cannot be found, we may be able to purchase a model of the exemplar vehicle. This exemplar project was provided by Lightpoint Data of California. To review, we have three photos of a damaged vehicle. These photos were taken by an unknown and uncalibrated camera. We want to model how much the front was crushed in an accident. We also have a photo modeler project of an undamaged vehicle of the same make and model. We will use the 3D data from the undamaged vehicle to solve the camera and the 3D points needed for our crush measurement. First, find at least four undamaged points that can be identified on both the crush and exemplar vehicles. The points should be easy to identify and have a good spread across the photo. Both of these crush photos have undamaged points around the sides and windshield. This third photo does not show sufficient undamaged area and so cannot be used. At least two photos are needed. When possible, using three or more photos is a good idea as it increases redundancy. The photos need to be taken from different positions, providing good intersection angles. Using photos taken from similar positions will not be useful. Some of the usable points such as the top of the windshield and the wheel centers already exist in the exemplar model. Additional points need to be marked and referenced on the exemplar vehicle. Starting with the driver's side, add points that can be used to tie the exemplar to the undamaged portion of the crushed photos. The points should be well marked on at least three photos with good angles. Try to find points that give a good spread across the photo and vehicle. The video will now speed up, demonstrating the marking and referencing of these last points on the driver's side. Now the driver's side is complete. Next, create similar points on the passenger side. After the exemplar points have been marked, Process the project and verify the quality of the new points by checking their residuals. Open a new 3D view and use the Ctrl-A key to select all visible objects. To make it easier to distinguish the exemplar later, place its model into a new layer. To help with visualization, assign the exemplar lines a new material. Also assign the exemplar points a new material. The exemplar model is complete and the solution is good. In the next stage, we will add the crushed vehicle photos and we will need to tie them to this exemplar 3D model. We don't want this exemplar model to be changed in any way. We do this by freezing the points. No changes to the project such as a photo mark being moved or a processing will affect the 3D position of frozen points. Additionally, these frozen points can be used as known information to help solve camera parameters for crushed photos. The project is saved as exemplar.pmr. The next stage is to load the crushed vehicle photos into this project of the exemplar with its frozen points. We will be matching up the undamaged area of the crushed vehicle with the exemplar vehicle. As no undamaged area is visible on the third photo, only the first two are added. 
We do not know anything about these photos, so we cannot assume that they were taken by the same camera or at the same focal length. A new inverse camera is created for both photos. The pop-up explains the inverse camera has been added and the photo has been set to solve for focal length. The inverse camera flags can be adjusted on the photo properties dialog. The most important inverse parameter to solve for is the focal length. To solve the focal length, four or more frozen points with good spread must be marked on each photo. In certain cases, we may want to solve for the principal point as well. This may be necessary if we think the photographs have been cropped and the image is off-center. Solving for principal point requires a very strong set of control points. Hence, we solve for focal length alone at first. The format aspect ratio is rarely solved in inverse camera, and we do so only if there is a scan error or some other problem that would affect pixel squareness. To solve using inverse camera, known information must be marked on the photos. We use our exemplar frozen points for this. Reference the frozen points from the exemplar to the undamaged portion of the crushed vehicle. Aim for a good spread over this image. Marking points accurately is always important, but is especially so for these frozen points, which are used for the inverse camera solution. Once the maximum number of points has been marked, a pop-up appears explaining processing can run now. Before processing, we will add additional frozen points to strengthen the solution. If background processing was turned on, the project would solve and resolve automatically as each point was added. As background processing is turned off, processing should be started manually. Processing includes a solution for the inverse camera. Check the maximum residual after processing. If it is high, review the point markings. If the markings are good, we may need to add additional frozen points and increase the point spread to strengthen the solution. Next, check to ensure the reference helper line aligns across photos. Add a point to the exemplar and check the reference helper line intersects the same place on the crush photo. Reference these points to further improve the model. Check a few points in different areas of the image to verify the alignment. This point doesn't match exactly because the wheel is moved. Now solve the second unknown photo this time with background processing active. Again, reference frozen points to the undamaged portion of the crushed vehicle. To show what a poor solution looks like, this point is intentionally marked in the wrong location. It will be corrected later in this tutorial. Reference additional frozen points spread across the photo. When background processing is on, you need to ensure the first points placed have a good spread. After this point is added, background processing oriented the photo and solved the inverse camera. Now that the photo is oriented, the reference helper lines will appear. Due to the poorly marked windshield point, the solution is not good. The reference helper lines do not intersect the correct location for this point. Some other points closer to the correctly marked points are better but still off. Newly marked, non-frozen points also have poor reference helper lines. To fix this, the mark can be moved to the correct spot on the windshield. Dragging the bad mark to the correct position causes background processing to run, giving an improved solution. The reference helper line now intersects the expected location. Adding additional points gives more redundancy and strengthens the solution. Both crush photos are now solved. Currently, the driver side and passenger side crush photos only share the two windshield points. Sometimes you can increase strength by referencing points visible through windows. This point can be referenced on both crush photos. You can also strengthen a project by adding non-frozen references between the crush and exemplar. The same point added to the crush photos is also visible on the exemplar. The lighting makes it difficult to see in these two images. Using the Image Enhance tool can make it easier to identify the point. Adjusting the gamma brightens the area of interest on the active photo.
The point is referenced on four exemplar photos. Reference it to the existing point on the crush photos to tie them together. Another way to verify the solution is to display the 3D projections on the photos. Verify the 3D lines overlay the vehicle in the expected positions. The projected lines show the exemplar data overlaid on the crushed vehicle. Now that the crushed photos are reasonably well aligned with the exemplar photos, the crushed portion of the image can be investigated. No marks exist in this area of the image, so the alignment in this area may not be as good. The reference helper line doesn't quite intersect the hood where it is bent. And this point along the bumper doesn't match up well either. They could be referenced to help strengthen the solution, but for this example other points are referenced first. We will come back to these marks later to see how the solution has been improved. Reference clearly identifiable points between the damaged photos. These points increase the spread, redundancy, and tie between photos, allowing processing to refine the solution. After adding references in this area of the image, the reference helper line along the bumper has improved alignment. The reference helper lines for other points in this area also match. The point at the hood bend also has an improved reference helper line. With this good solution, the reference helper line can be used to help identify points of interest along the damaged area. This is helpful when you have an edge in a photo, but no clearly identifiable point. Add points in any area of interest. If a point is missed or is identified as being important, it can be added later. Mark points in key areas to outline the damaged hood. Finally, lines are added to help visualize the damaged area. Turn off point visibility to make it easier to select all lines and assign them to a new layer. Also assign the damage lines a new bright blue material. The 3D view shows the green and yellow exemplar vehicle overlaying the blue and white crushed vehicle. The exemplar project contained a scale and rotation and hence will define the project's coordinate system. Measurements can be taken using the measure pane and dimensions added to the photos. These photos can be exported or printed, including the marks and dimensions.
The full 3D model or a top-down 2D view can be exported in a variety of formats. The exported file and associated CAD drawings can be used for additional analysis, such as measuring crush offsets or for animation in another program. In summary, the tutorial showed how to use an undamaged exemplar to measure changes in a damaged vehicle, identify undamaged areas that can be matched to an exemplar vehicle, freeze 3D points for use with inverse camera, reference frozen points from an exemplar to a set of crush photos, check accuracy of the solution, add points to identify key areas of damage, Compare and measure the crushed areas. Export photos and 3D models for further analysis.